Good morning, this is Kathy Champion with Random Acts of Crafting and I hope everyone's having a very uh, blessed day. Um, I thought today that I would bring you this elegant card that I saw on um, on Pinterest and I didn't totally replicate it but kind of sort of. Um, I just did a, a couple of things a little different but this is the card and uh, I made this, um, I'm a praying for you card, you're in my prayers, and I stamped this little angel, but I embellished it with some flowers that I made. Uh, these were all paper flowers that I actually made, and I'm going to show you how I did that. And then inside I put those same flowers in the corner, along with these little, um, I guess like a little evergreen um, leaves or limbs. And I did put a piece of ribbon here, and uh, I made it look like the ribbon was tied under the flower, but it actually isn't. It's actually tucked up underneath the mat. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to actually do this in a different color today. So I thought it would be nice to make it in these two shades of orange. So I'm going to take the darker orange, and we're going to cut that down for our card base. Now that card is a 5 by 7 so... Um, I'm going to show you how to cut um, 5x7. Uh, it's, it's very easy to do. We know that it needs to be 10 inches because we're going to score it at 5 to give us that 5. So we're basically going to cut this at 10 because 5 and 5 is 10. Now in order to cut a 10 inch piece, we line up the edge of our paper with the 10 and then we just slice down. I've had some people to say that they're having difficulty with measuring and I think I'm going to devote an entire video and I might I may do that later today that's going to be totally on using your trimmer and cutting your pieces as you need them. Now we're going to turn it and we're going to cut this off at 7. So this will give us, and you can do this with a um, 8.5 by 11 uh, sheet of paper. That's what I'm using. Now hang on to your scraps because you know you might be able to use those um, somewhere else on the card or on another project. So this gives us our card base, and we're going to score that in the middle. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and cut a 5 inch, let's see, let's go 5.5. And this is going to be, now if you noticed, I lined it up at five and a half. And I'm going to save that piece of white. And I'm going to cut this at five and a half because I need a five, by, a five and a half by five and a half uh, inch square. And this is what we're going to use to make our little envelope that is living on the card. Now the next piece we need is the mat. To mat a um, five by seven card, um, I'm going to go to four and three fourths because I want it to be four and three fourths. That's going to give me that quarter inch border all the way around, which is what I'm looking for. So we're going to go four, and we know that the height of the card is seven. So I want to cut this at six and three quarters, a quarter inch less than what your card actually is. So six and three quarters, we're going to line it up right here, six and three quarters, and now that will give you this piece that will fit, will live on the front of our card. So we've got our pieces cut now. The other thing we're going to need is out of the same piece, we're going to need probably a three by four. And this is going to be the little message. And we might need to trim that a little bit. That's the piece that's going to fit down in our envelope like this. So the other thing we need to do is we need to make the flowers that we want to go on this. These scrap pieces of paper will be wonderful for making our flowers out of. So that's like I said, do not throw your scraps away because you will be able to use them. So let me grab my dies. flowers that I used on this particular one, I used the flowers on my little butterfly set. And this little flower right here, um, two of them with one of the smaller ones in the middle makes a beautiful, beautiful little flower. So I'm going to pull some of these off. 
I might even do this one and this one. So I'm just going to cut a variety of flowers and I'm actually going to wait because I think I'm going to use that same punch that I used before to do my little branches because I really like the way those looked. And this is the this is a Tim Holtz um, little branch punch and I'm not sure if you can still buy these. I will look and see if they're available on Amazon but I think this was one of his older punches and I've had this for a good while. Um, and I don't even remember where I got this. I don't know if it was eBay or um, Amazon or where, but I've had it for a good while now. So I'm not sure if it's still available, but like I said, I will definitely check. And I'm going to grab my cuddle bug. And if you notice, I've got a new mat, and I'm hoping that the glare is not going to be bad on this mat. It is a glass mat. And um, I'm liking the way it's feeling, so if I don't get a glare, I will continue to use it. Okay, let's grab our plates. We're going to need our A plate, our C plate, and a B plate. I want to I want to start out with um, maybe this little piece. So I am going to lay this onto my plate, and I'm going to just go ahead and lay down all of these. I know I'm going to have to cut them more than once, but that's okay. Um, we can run this through about three, four times, and we should get enough of flowers to do what we need to do. But oops, I forgot one. And it's nice if you can cut, um, you know, quite a few at one time. It definitely saves time in running them through your cuddle bug or your die cut machine. There's so many different die cut machines out there. Um, I'm going to put on my Christmas list that I, I need a new die a machine. Um, I do have the bigger one, but I'm going to get something smaller um, to use here. But I'm going to use my cuddle bug. Um, as long as I possibly can because it cuts really well. Um, actually, what I would love to invest in is an electric one so I could just push a button and not have to crank these through. But for right now, that's not a necessity. The main thing is just being able to uh, craft with all of you and we can make uh, beautiful things together. So there's those and these. And I got this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay these over to the side. And I'm going to show you how I make my flowers. But we're going to cut this out a couple of more times. I'm going to cut these flowers and then we'll get right back. Okay, we're back and I got all of my little flowers cut. And I have them laying right over here on my... Um, on my mat. So I am going to go ahead and put these dies back. Uh, a good rule of thumb when you are cutting uh, dies or using stamp sets are to make sure that you put them back in the right um, set so that you don't lose your pieces and you don't forget where they go. So that's just another little, um, little quick tidbit. So now what we need to do is I'm going to use this embossing folder and this one is called um, Judy's Garden and it is a Cricut Cuddle Bug folder and I am going to take this mat and we're just going to lay it right in the center like this. Close it down. I want to try to make sure I get it nice and even but yet I want it to grab the uh, impression all the way around. So I'm just fitting it in there like that. Close it up. Now we're going to put in an A plate and a B plate. Our embossing folder with our paper in it. And then we're going to cover that up with the other B plate. And we are just going to run this through our cuddle bug. And if y'all notice what I do, I have one good set of B plates, and I do not cut with these. I did cut with them by, by accident, 
uh, grabbed them one day and this one does have the cut marks in it. I don't know if you can see that. But this one's not warped. So if you can see that. So I keep these two good ones that are not warped um, just for my um, embossing. So and I use the warped one that's cut really bad uh, to cut with. That's why I'm saying I really, really need another one. I'm going to see if I can pan out just a little bit. Nope, I think I'm already out as far as it'll go. So I think we're done with our cuddle bug. Let's just go ahead and put that up. I do need to get a pretty piece of green. And let me see if i got a scrap over here. may be a little OCD for some of you, but I keep my scraps in folders, and I didn't know if this would be a good idea for any of you, but I have one that's green, so I keep anything that's green inside of this folder. So when I'm looking for a certain piece of green paper, I can just come to this folder, and all of my greens from light to dark, and everything in between is right here. I'm going to take that little piece out, and this, let's see if this strip, that strip may work. I don't know, I don't think it's quite wide enough, so let's go with that. And I may cut a couple of different colors. Let's try that one. And I'm going to grab the punch that I showed you. Here it is right here. And to open this punch, you just slide it like that. It opens really well. So let's try cutting a couple of these. And I always look when I put it in and make sure that my paper is showing. And there's one. And I'm going to go up this way as far as I can. And I'm going to cut another one. Now if you cut too many of these, it's not a big deal. You can always throw them in, your, in the little um, baggy or a little um, container or something that you keep stuff like that in. And then you've got them for the next time. So I'm going to cut about four out of that one. And let's go with this smaller piece and see if we can get it. Oh yeah, that's going to work really good. Now this is thicker cardstock, so it's going to be a little bit harder. Let's see if I can set it down. That does not want to punch. And I, th I shot it across the room. <laughs> this is that Brutus Monroe 110-pound um, cardstock. So like I said, it is a super thick cardstock, but I absolutely love it because it's such good quality. I'm sorry I'm having difficulty with this punch, but it does not want to punch for me. There we go. Now let's see if we can get one more. just going to go with those. We got four and three. That's seven. And I'm going to need probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe one more. Working my upper, upper body muscles this morning. Okay. And of course that one flew somewhere. All the way down under my desk. All right, we got those done, and we'll put that in the scraps, and we'll throw that little piece away because that one was pretty much done. Now I'm going to lock my punch back down, and now, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and put my green folder up because I've used all of my. Well, actually, 
we're going to put this little piece back in our folder. I have a tendency of throwing everything in my scrap box. I do have a scrap box, and what I do from time to time, I will just clean it out and uh, actually move all my scraps into where I need them to be. And that just makes it much easier for me. Um, you know, I forgot to emboss. Well, I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the folder first, or cut the uh, envelope before I do that. So, um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to move all of these little tidbits over here. And we are going to put this little piece back in here. I need to turn my air down just a hair because um, I have an app on my phone that lets me control it. So I was doing that to keep from having to get up and go turn the thermostat down. So that's what I was a little bit preoccupied with. So we are under a heat wave here in the south. For it to be September, it has been extremely warm. All right, so see how pretty that embossed? I don't know if you can see that. It's gorgeous. So I'm going to lay this over to the side because we don't need that. And let's go ahead and get our scoreboard out. And we're going to go ahead and, and score this. I think it's going to be beautiful out of this orange. I really think it's going to pop. Um, my, couldn't find my bone folder. <laughs> Okay, we're going to score it at five. I'm going to give it just a really good little crease. And then I'm going to fold my card over. And that gives us our card base. Now this is going to live on top of it, like this. And I think it looks so elegant having the darker in the back, the lighter, and then doing the... Um, the envelope, the white envelope on it. I think it's just it's just such a stunning card. When I saw this, I was like, I have got to bring this card to all of you because it's not a hard card to make. You do need some tools, you know, in order to do the embossing. Um, you do need a cuddle bug and, a, and the embossing folders. But if you don't have that, don't let this stop you from making this card. Use a piece of pattern paper on top of it. Something that coordinates really good with the background that a white uh, envelope would look good on. That would be the perfect um, way to do this. So please never ever feel that you cannot do what I show you just because you don't have the, the specific tools that I use. You can always use a, um, a piece of um, printed uh, cardstock or your pattern paper. It's, and, and I think this card would be lovely like that as well. So, okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to get out my little envelope, um, my one, two, three punch board. And we are going to look at this and see for a five and a half. I think that would make a three by three, and it does. And we need to score it at. two and three fourths. So I am going to bring in this little piece of white paper. And we're going to put it in at two and three fourths. So here is our two and there's two and three fourths right there. And we're going to punch. I've got to get my little scoring tool out. Make sure I'm in the same right spot. We're going to go right into here and we're going to score it down. And we're going to turn it, punch, and score. Line it up again, punch, and score. Line it up one last time. We're going to punch and score. Now this is going to give us that cute little envelope that's going to live on top of our card. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to round my corners. That's the next thing I want to do. 
while I've got it sitting here. And this is our corner rounder on the side. Now you could do this with your with any kind of corner rounder, you, but I figure if you got this tool and it's sitting here, why not use it rather than having to pull out something different? So there's our corners all rounded, and we can put this up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get a different embossing folder, just something with a flower or a swirl or something like that that's just a little different. And let's see, I think I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use this one. This is a Doris or Doris. And I don't have a name on this one, um, but it, it just looks like it's a swirly pattern. I don't know if you can see that. So any type of swirly pattern would work for this. And I did run into this type of problem when I did this before. So I tell you what, we're gonna we're gonna fold this down and we're gonna try doing this a little bit different. Let's go ahead and get our our creases in. And I'm gonna try laying this in and actually Let's get this end out like so. Isn't that a cute little envelope? I'm going to go ahead and glue this envelope together, and I'll tell you why I'm going to do that. I'm just going to use a little bit of ATG, and I'm going to run just a little piece right there, and then run some down this way. And I use this a lot of times because it is quick. It's quick to uh, stick something together. And there we go. There's our little envelope. But this is the side that's going to be showing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this whole envelope into our embossing folder like so. Let's see. Let's put it this way. And let's run that through our cuddle bug. I was thinking we were done with this little gadget, but we wasn't. And let me get my two B plates and my A plate. And we're just going to slide that in and give it a really good little push through. I'm going to probably run this through a couple of times because I want to make sure that all of that envelope gets really well embossed. And I think that would do it. cute is that? Is that not adorable? Now this is the side that's going to show. Again, like I've said, you do not have to do exactly as I do. Um, you know, this is the little card you note, know, the note card that's going to be sticking out. And I think I did do that. That was a three by four, and that works really good. And this is where you're going to stamp your sentiment. So uh, I'm going to lay that over for just a moment, and we're going to get back to the front of our card. This card comes together really quickly. I think the most time-consuming thing is putting your flowers together. But we're going to go ahead and glue down our um, back, our mat to our card. Again, I'm just going to use the AG, the ATG. I always say that wrong. And I'm just going to put a few lines of this right down like this and one right on the edge. I wasn't using it after the other day. I ran out of um, my tape, so I ordered some and had to wait for it to come in. Um, thank goodness for Amazon and two-day shipping because that did save me. Okay, I'm going to press that down. 
down really good. It looks like it's trying to lift right there. So when if you have a little lifting around the edges, especially if you use your um, your ATG, um, just come back with a little bit of art glitter glue and go up under the edge like that, and then just stick it down. And that definitely caught it. So get a little art glitter glue to the rescue. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start assembling my flowers. Now, there's mats that you can buy to do this with, but I just use this old uh, mouse pad that I've got. I keep it in here in my craft room for that specific purpose, and it works just as good as any of the um, other tools. Now, I'm going to get these two EK tools. Uh, these come in a pack of three. Uh, and they're called stylus tools, but we use this one as our picky tool, and uh, these other ones can be used for scoring. And these two bigger ends, I'm going to show you how I make my flowers. So the flowers are usually very, oh, it looks like my little filtration, sorry for the bright light, I need to put my filter, yeah, my filter it is a paper towel. <laughs> As the saying goes, you got to work with what you got. So just excuse me for a moment and let me see if I can get this to connect back over here. Uh, it's connecting with um, painter's tape, so just so you'll know, I'm very, very technical here with my equipment. But you know what? It works. It gives me a good filtration on my light. It just doesn't hold really well. But that's much better. Sorry about that. Technical issues. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to pull these little um, boughs right here because I don't need to do anything with them. But now these little flowers, I'm going to pull out these ones that are the same, like this. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to glue them on top of each other. But I'm going to glue them where they make a a complete circle. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, excuse my hands. I did bring this in with rather, I did paint my nails, so um, at least they're not as bad as they were. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into the middle. Let's use the bigger one. This is your bigger stylist. Get that to focus. Oops. Anyway, I'm going to go right into the center of that flower, and I'm just going to make little circles until those petals start to... Um, turn up and you can actually even go down out to the petals if you want to some people do that and some don't and it just depends on the look you want your little flower to have but I'm going to do the same thing for this one and then I am going to take just a little dab of art glitter glue just a, a bare smidgen like that. And if you've got one of these little jewel picker uh, tools, these are so nice to pick these up with because you can sit that right in. And see how I'm setting it down where the petals are offset? And that's, oops, get back around there. So I'm going to hold that and see if I can turn it. like so. Now I'm going to come back in with one of the smaller flowers, one of these, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take, I'm going to use the smaller stylus for this one. I'm just going to mash that in like so, and I'm going to put another little dab of glue. It doesn't take a lot of glue because these, um, these stick really good. I'm just going to put that right there in the center, and I'm going to set that over to dry. We have one flower made. Now we are going to we are going to put some little pearls inside, so they will dress it up quite a bit. All right, another one of these. Now you do have a a right side and a wrong side. The right the right side will be smooth, and the the 
bottom side usually picks up the texture of your cutting plate, the bottom plate. So I always try to look and make sure that I'm in, I have the right side up so that I don't have those little marks. But, you know, you could use them and it gives it character. So I am going to grab another one of these. I'm going to zoom y'all out now because I think you get the gist of what I'm doing. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to work the middle of this until it curls. I'm going to put a little art glitter glue right there in the middle. And I'm going to use my little jewel picker. Pick this one up and sit it right down like so. Then we're going to get another little one. And this is a little bit time consuming, but you know, it is so worth it. Um, I love making my own embellishments because uh, it's a sense that you made the entire card. And it's nothing wrong with using the store-bought flowers. I think they're adorable, and I have a collection. And anytime I go in a store and they've got the flowers, I always gravitate to picking up some of them because I think they're just so cute. Now this one's a little bit different. This is going to be a smaller flower. So I'm just going to do it like that. Put that little dab of art glitter glue right there in the middle. And then I'm going to work this one just a, t a tad bit. I don't want to do that one too much because these are the smaller ones. I'm going to set that down like so. And we're going to call that little one done. Now let's see if we can do a couple more of the big ones. And I think that will give us... And we, we're going to need to do a couple more of the small ones. So there's one. There's one. And these. And I got this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay these over to the side. And I'm going to show you how I make my flowers. But we're going to cut this out a couple of more times. I'm going to cut these flowers and then we'll get right back. There's one. And there's one. So I think we can make that work for us. Okay, let's work the middle of this flower. I do want to make um, a big one. I, on this card, I used a uh, flower that I had purchased. Um, like I said, and I made these. But um, I was thinking of making one because I had an idea um, of something I wanted to do. So we'll let, let's see how this all comes together. And we may pull out the cuddle bug and another... Um, another die set. So let's just see how this comes together. Hmm, I think I'm going to leave that one like that. Now let's do some of these smaller ones. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put that on that. That'll give me another flower and I am going to use this one in here. And you can layer these flowers as much as you want to, depending on your set of dies. Now let's work these really quick. I'm just going to go like that and like that. And we'll try to get through these pretty quickly. And as you can see, this is not rocket science. This is not anything that's hard to do. 
it is just um, it's just basically putting these little flowers together and uh, it's time consuming but when we're making a beautiful card a little extra effort like this um, for me I'm always up for a challenge and uh, I like to challenge myself sometimes to do something a little different we can put together and let's do that like so and this one like that this just brings them to life when you curl them up like that it just so much more makes them like look like flowers rather than being flat you know nothing in our world is flat um, uh, unless you go out in the Midwest and I'm sure you'll see flat out there my daughter used to live in Ohio and I couldn't get over how flat it was there because I live in sort of the it's considered the Piedmont part of North Carolina but we can see the mountains and I have um, a small mountain that people do a lot of um, climbing and stuff called Crowder's Mountain and it's right in my backyard and uh, it's a beautiful beautiful place uh, a lot of hikers love to hike up there, especially in the spring. Okay, so let's move our little mat out of the way. And I'm going to protect this little jewel picker because these stickies will lose their sticky. And I just restuck mine last night. And you do that by just wrapping some scotch tape around it. And basically it cleans the fuzzies off. So what we want to do now, and you know I did put the mat down before I put my, my ribbon Hmm. Okay, let's think how we can do this. We can still do this. Again, I'm thinking outside of the box. And I am thinking what I might do to match the envelope is find a strip of paper in white and put it right across the top. I think that would work and it would look beautiful. So. Again, like I said, any time that you make um, an error, just look at it as, as an opportunity to make something more beautiful. Now this will work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down to three quarters of an inch. So about like so. Maybe an inch. We can always trim it back down. I think an inch is good. grab that embossing folder and this is the one that we did the envelope in and I am going to lay this in the middle every time I think I'm done with the cuddle bug guess what we have to pull him back out but it's okay let's lay in our a plate and a B plate, our embossing folder, sandwich it in between the B plate, and let's just work this through. And we're going to bring it back through. A lot of you follow Bill and uh, Tracy Phillips on Gift Basket Appeal. Um, and mindless crafting and I always love what Bill says that a mistake is just an opportunity to be creative and that is so true because when I realized I did not take I did not put that down it gave me the opportunity to do this so I may not have thought to do this so we are going we know that this mat is four and three quarters so we're going to cut this down to four and three quarters. And again, I'm lining it up at four and three quarters. This looks like it's lifting right there on the side too. 
little bit of glue right there. And I am going to put glue on the back of this. maybe three-eighths of an inch. I'm not measuring, I'm just eyeballing it. And there we go. All right, we fixed that little issue. Now we need to get our envelope glued on because what I want to do is get the elements onto the card and then, and I'm going to pull this um, the envelope over as far this way as I can get it and as far down to the bottom as I can get it, just like so. Now I'm going to lay this over and I'm going to look and see if I have a ready-made flower that I would like to put on there. If I don't, I'm going to look for a die and see if I can make one. So hang tight and I'll be right back. Okay, we are back and I went through my stash of already made flowers and I found these little puppies and what do they call it? Poppies and Prairie. And I got these at Hobby Lobby. And as you can see, I got them on sale. They were $6.99, reduced down to $1.74. Um, when I see flowers that are that cheap, I can't resist. So what I did is I took two that had a little bit of a orangey, pinky looking um, outer edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to glue these two little bowels. Uh, onto my card right about there and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of angle them like that and put the glue down and then I want to set my flowers directly into the glue Don't be afraid to, you know, mash your flowers. You can always fluff them back up once they're they're stuck down. Um, and these are just um, a, a heavy duty um, paper. They feel almost like cloth, but they are paper. And see that little bit of green just added so much to, and then we're going to put this up about like so, but before I do that, I want to take this out and I want to stamp a sentiment. So I want to see how far I want that to stick out. I want it to stick about to there. So I'm going to use my, let me show you what I'm doing. I stuck this back in the envelope because I want to get an idea of where I need to glue my, or stamp my sentiment. So I know I don't want to go any lower than right here. So I'm going to make those slight, slight pencil marks so you just barely see them. I don't know if you can see them with the light. But trust me, I got pencil marks right there and there that I can see. So let me get a sentiment. And I think this one I want to make it a thank you card. So let me find... Um, And Tracy and Bill from Mindless Crafting had this uh, particular stamp that was called um, Thank You, and I thought this would be precious for this uh, sentiment. You also got these little um, corners that we could easily put here. See how they would look if we stamp those as well. And if it if I like this, I may put this in my misty and stamp it all on the misty. Let's see if it's, this one looks better here. Let's 
Yeah, I think I like that like that. And let's get the thank you. Make sure we can get it above that line, and we can. This is going to be so pretty. Okay. I think I am hmm, debating, debating. I think I'm going to go ahead and try my luck with this on a stamp block, and I've got this big one. So, my main concern is if I'm getting these positioned just as I should. Let's move them around a little bit with the pencil eraser. I think that's good. And I'm going to take my chance and pick this up. And I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. Now I have not used this thank you before. As you can see, it is um, unused. So I'm just going to rub my fingers across it to pick up some of the oil in my hands. I think I have used these before. They look like they've been stamped. Yeah. All right. So, you know, if all else fails, you know what we'll do? We'll cut another piece of orange, three by four, and we'll come back and try again. Maybe I'll stamp it off on a piece of white paper. like we want it. Oh yeah. That's going to stamp very pretty. Alright, let's re-ink it again. Okay, now we know we want to get that up above the, the marks that I put in. I hope my head's not in the camera. But I am trying to get over top of this so that I can get my image exactly where I want it. I'm just going to press that and hold it there. I did want to tell y'all, I don't know how many of you, because I know I have a lot of new crafters on my uh, channel, but if you have this VersaFine Onyx Black ink, you can buy the little refill for it. It comes in a little small bottle. It's about, about that big and uh, it re-inks wonderfully. So if your pad is getting dry where you've used it uh, quite a bit, um, instead of buying a whole new ink pad, get your little re-inker and you can extend the life of your pad for a long time. So you really don't need to buy a new one until um, your um, pad becomes so worn. That is so pretty. So I'm going to sit that over there. And I think I really like the way that turned out. I think that framed the thank you. Let's see. Do this just a little bit to see. Now I am going to do something a little different on the embellishments. Instead of putting pearls on this one, I think I'm going to use some little rhinestones. I think it will set this card off. Now I'm going to turn this over and just put a little piece of, of um, my ATG on it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this down. Open your envelope enough so it doesn't adhere until you're ready for it to. Once I get it in where I want it, just like that, and I'm going to press it. And that's going to adhere that to there. Now I'm going to take a little bit of art glitter glue and put right into here on both sides and just kind of press that down so that it kind of seals around your envelope. Now we are ready to put this onto our card. Now remember what I said, we want to get this to this corner and to right here and still give ourselves room um, 
So I, again, I think I'm going to use liquid glue this time. The reason for that is this raised up embossed area might take better to the liquid glue because you've got all these little divvies in it. what I'm going to do is uh, later today I'm going to start working on um, the Christmas album. So the Christmas album will definitely be more than one video. I think I'm going to break it down into um, at least three, maybe four, even five different um, videos. And I think we need to do that for the fact that it is, um, it's going to be pretty extensive in what we're doing. So I'm going to put these little bells right here. And I think we're going to put one of the bigger flowers. You know, I want these more onto the white. So let's go right here. And we're going to put a flower there. Let me get my little, my little rhinestones. And I'm going to go for these smaller ones. Now these do have adhesive on the back of them, but sometimes they don't always adhere as good as we would like. So if you get one that doesn't feel like it's um, doing what you need it to do, stick a little bit of glue in there. Okay, I am going to put the glue right down on top of this. And then I'm going to sit this little flower right there. I'm going to grab one of the smaller ones. Let me see if I have any smaller rhinestones because I think that small one is definitely calling for a tinier little jewel. I do have these. I think Donna sent me these. I think. And I think I'm going to grab one of these little bitty ones right there. So uh, let's get this one. And I am going to lay that right into the middle and press it down. Oh, that's so cute. I love that. And we're going to put that flower right there. So a tiny bit of glue. And set that down right there. Isn't that pretty? It is so coming together. So now we are going to come back down to this corner. And I am mixing and matching these little, um, I guess they look like evergreen um, bowels, bow, bowers, little sticks, little stems and limbs. And I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to put the art glitter glue right on top of it. And we're going to turn them in like so. And then I'm going to grab a larger flower. And I'm going to stick him right there. And I'm going to use one of the bigger gems to go on that one. smaller ones and I think I'm going to put him right there. So let's go ahead and get a little jewel down on, on him because I think these are just adding so much. You see what a difference it makes when you put the gem inside the flower. The flowers absolutely come to life. Oops, sorry about the noise. That's one thing I don't like about the mat. It's a little on the noisy side. I may not use this except when I'm doing some heavy cutting using my X-Acto knife. Okay, now let's see. I think I want to put the bigger ones. Right 
here and maybe one of these smaller ones. Oops. Right in the middle. Okay, and I do want to put one on the envelope like I did with the pearls. I think this just adds so much. Maybe we'll put it right here, just like that. You know, that dressed that card up quite a bit. You know, I think I like this better down. Let's see if I can get it up without tearing my paper. And I did. Yeah, I think I like it better on the envelope. I think that is so lovely. So I'm gonna open it. And we need a piece of white. Let's see, I'm pretty sure I had a piece of white over here that we cut off. There we go. So this is the piece we cut off of to make the envelope. So I'm going to cut this down, and I'm going to cut it the same size I did the mat, this orange mat. And that was at four and three fourths. six and three-fourths. And then we are going to glue these flowers in our corners. We've got two stems. And I'm going to do one corner and the other corner. We are going to put some of the jewels inside these flowers as well. So I am going to pick a gem up and stick it down inside of this one. And we're going to stick one flower there. fingers just got all in the way. There we go. I've got my little gems in those. So let's put down a little glue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the bottom corner and bring it up bring it out like that just like a little chicken foot and then I'm going to lay that into that glue and I'm going to bring one of these right here and one right there just do the same thing up here. We're just going to put a little dab of the glue for this to live in. And then we're going to put some right over here for this flower. And then some right here and set this one in. And I want to stamp um, something about being thankful. How about may 
God bless you each and every day. I love that. That would be a beautiful, beautiful thing to send to, on a thank you card. And this, st this stamp is big. It's going to make a statement. This is Meme's um, stamp set called God's Blessings. May God bless you. And there's all kinds with peace and happiness on your anniversary all through the year, today and always. Um, each and every day. I like that one. May God bless you for your kindness. Let's see that one. I am making this card for someone. And they have been extremely kind to me. Probably above and beyond. So I want them to see my appreciation. sure I'm getting this lined up so I am taking my time I think that did it I'm grab a stamp block hopefully the, yeah this one's good what I want to do is line this up oops if I'd have thought ahead I probably would have put this in my misty See how even that looks. Okay. Now I am going to ink this with my Versafine because I love to um, do this on my, my large sentiments like this. This stamp does not appear to be inking real well, so I'm going to stamp off. Yeah, see, I, I, I just knew from what I was doing there that that one was not stamping good. Or it wasn't inking up well. And I don't want to mess up this card now that I've worked those flowers in it. bit of the squeaky clean and clean that stamp and like I've told you before I have found out that squeaky clean will condition your stamps to where they will stamp really good and I'm going to use this little microfiber cloth that I have just to kind of get off the excess and then we're going to try this again Now don't fret over if you want to reproduce this flower. I will definitely have all the measurements, the items I used, and um, an affiliate link where you can actually go and purchase some of these items. So um, please don't feel like that you can't um, make this card. I'm going to try stamping this off one more time. I just don't want to take a chance of it not taking on my, on my card. So bear with me. That's still not good. Every now and then you just get a stamp that does not want to stamp well. I'm going to go in and press that down between it and see if that will help. Sometimes if you have stamps that won't stamp well. Okay, we are back. And I went through my stash of already made flowers and I found these little poppies in, what are they called? Poppies in Prairie. And I got these at Hobby Lobby. And as you can see, I got them on sale. They were $6.99, reduced down to 
Um, when I see flowers that are that cheap, I can't resist. So what I did is I took two that had a little bit of a orangey, pinky looking um, outer edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to glue these two little bowels uh, onto my card right about there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of angle them like that and put the glue down. And then I want to set my flowers directly into the glue. And don't be afraid to, you know, mash your flowers. You can always fluff them back up once they're they're stuck down. Um, and these are just um, a, a heavy-duty um, paper. They feel almost like cloth, but they are paper. Now that is so cute. And see that little bit of green just added so much. And then we're going to put this up about like so. But before I do that, I want to take this out and I want to stamp a sentiment. So I want to see how far I want that to stick out. I want it to stick about to there. So I'm going to use my, let me show you what I'm doing. I stuck this back in the envelope because I want to get an idea of where I need to glue my, I'll stamp my sentiment. So I know I don't want to go any lower than right here. So I'm going to make this slight, slight pencil marks so you just barely see them. I don't know if you can see them with the light, but trust me, I got pencil marks right there and there that I can see. So let me get a sentiment, and I think this one I want to make it a thank you card. So let me find, um, and Tracy and Bill from Mindless Crafting had this uh, particular stamp that was called um, Thank You, and I thought this would be precious for this uh, sentiment. You also got these little um, corners that we could easily put here. Let's see how they would look if we stamp those as well. And if it if I like this, I may put this in my misty and stamp it all on the misty. Let's see if it's, this one looks better here. I think I like that like that. Let's get the thank you. Make sure we can get it above that line, and we can. This is going to be so pretty. Debating, debating. I think I'm going to go ahead and try my luck with this on a stamp block. And I've got this big one. So, my main concern is if I'm getting these positioned just as I should. Let's move them around a little bit with the pencil eraser. I think that's good. And I'm going to take my chance and pick this up. And I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. Now, I have not used this Thank You before. As you can see, it is um, 
unused, so I'm just going to rub my fingers across it just to pick up some of the oil in my hands. I think I have used these before. They look like they've been stamped. Yeah. Alright, so you know, if all else fails, you know what we'll do? We'll cut another piece of orange, 3 by 4 and we'll come back and try again. Maybe I'll stamp it off on a piece of white paper. Very pretty. All right, let's re ink it again. Okay, now we know we want to get that up above the, the marks that I put in. I hope my head's not in the camera. But I am trying to get over top of this so that I can get my image exactly where I want it. I'm just going to press that and hold it there. I did want to tell y'all, I don't know how many of you, because I know I have a lot of new crafters on my uh, channel, but if you have this VersaFine Onyx Black ink, you can buy the little refill for it. It comes in a little small bottle. It's about, about that big. And uh, it re-inks wonderfully. So if your pad is getting dry where you've used it uh, quite a bit, um, instead of buying a whole new ink pad, get your little re-inker and you can extend the life of your pad for a long time. So you really don't need to buy a new one until um, your um, pad becomes so worn. That is so pretty. So I'm going to sit that over there. And I think I really like the way that turned out. I think that framed the thank you. Let's see. Do this just a little bit to see. Now I am going to do something a little different on the embellishments. Instead of putting pearls on this one, I think I'm going to use some little rhinestones. I think it will set this card off. Now I'm going to turn this over and just put a little piece of, of um, my ATG on it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this down. Open your envelope enough so it doesn't adhere until you're ready for it to. Once I get it in where I want it, just like that, and I'm going to press it. And that's going to adhere that to there. Now I'm going to take a little bit of art glitter glue and put right into here on both sides and just kind of press that down so that it kind of seals around your envelope. Now we are ready to put this onto our card. Now remember what I said, we want to get this to this corner and to right here and still give ourselves room. Um, so again, I think I'm going to use liquid glue this time. The reason for that is this raised up embossed area might take better to the liquid glue because you got all these little divvies in it. And I think what I'm going to do is uh, later today I'm going to start working on um, the Christmas album. So the Christmas album will definitely be more than one video. I think I'm going to break it down into um, at least three, maybe four, even five different um, videos. And I think we need to do that for the fact that it is um, it's going to be pretty extensive in what we're doing. So I'm going to put these little bells right here. And I think we're going to put one of the bigger flowers. You know, I want these more onto the white. So let's go right here. 
And we're going to put a flower there. Let me get my little, my little rhinestones. And I'm going to go for these smaller ones. Now these do have adhesive on the back of them, but sometimes they don't always adhere as good as we would like. So if you get one that doesn't feel like it's um, doing what you need it to do, stick a little bit of glue in there. Okay, I am going to put glue right down on top of this. And then I'm going to sit this little flower right there. I'm going to grab one of the smaller ones. Let me see if I have any smaller rhinestones because I think that small one is definitely calling for a tinier little jewel. I do have these. I think Donna sent me these. I think. And I think I'm going to grab one of these little bitty ones right there. So let's get this one. And I am going to lay that right into the middle and press it down. Oh, that's so cute. I love that. And we're going to put that flower right there. So a tiny bit of glue. And set that down right there. Isn't that pretty? It is so coming together. So now we are going to come back down to this corner. And I am mixing and matching these little, um, I guess they look like evergreen um, bowels, bow, bowers, little sticks, little stems and limbs. And I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to put the art glitter glue right on top of it. And we're going to turn them in like so. And then I'm going to grab a larger flower. And I'm going to stick him right there. And then I'm going to use one of the bigger gems to go on that one. Grab one of the smaller ones and I think I'm going to put him right there. So let's go ahead and get a little jewel down on, on him because I think these are just adding so much. You see what a difference it makes when you put the gem inside the flower. The flowers absolutely come to life. Oops, sorry about the noise. That's one thing I don't like about the mat. It's a little on the noisy side. So I may not use this except when I'm doing some heavy cutting using my X-Acto knife. Okay, now let's see. I think I want to put the bigger ones. Right here. Right here. And maybe one of these smaller ones. Oops. Right in the middle. Okay, and I do want to put one on the envelope, like I did with the pearls. I think this just adds so much. Maybe we'll put it right here, just like that. Now that dressed that card up quite a bit. You know, I think I like this better down. See if I can get it up without tearing my paper. And I did. Yeah, I think I like it better on the envelope. I think that is so lovely. So I'm going to open it. And we need a piece of white. See, I'm pretty sure I had a piece of white over here that we cut off. There we 
Okay, so this is the piece we cut off of to make the envelope. So I'm going to cut this down, and I'm going to cut it the same size I did the mat, this orange mat. That was at four and three fourths. Five, six and three fourths. flowers in our corners. We've got two stems and I'm going to do one corner and the other corner. We are going to put some of the jewels inside these flowers as well. So I am going to pick a gem up and stick it down inside of this one. stick one flower there and one flower there oops my big old fingers just got all in the way gems in those. So let's put down a little glue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the bottom corner and bring it up, bring it out like that. Just like a little chicken foot. And then I'm going to lay that into that glue. And I'm going to bring one of these right here and one right there. just do the same thing up here. We're just going to put a little dab of the glue for this to live in. And then we're going to put some right over here for this flower. And then some right here and set this one in. And I want to stamp um, something about being thankful. How about, may God bless you each and every day. I love that. That would be a beautiful, beautiful thing to send to on a thank you card and this stamp, this stamp is big it's going to make a statement this is May May's um, stamp set called God's blessings may God bless you and there's all kinds with peace and happiness on your anniversary all through the year today and always um, each and every day I like that one may God bless you for your kindness let's see that one I am making this card for someone, and they have been extremely kind to me, probably above and beyond, so I want them to see my appreciation. sure I'm getting this lined up so I am taking my time I think that did it 
Let me grab a stamp block. Hopefully, yeah, this one's good. What I want to do is line this up. Oops. If I'd have thought ahead, I probably would have put this in my Misty. Let's see how even that looks. Okay. Now I am going to ink this with my Versafine because I love to um, do this on my, my large sentiments like this. And this stamp does not appear to be inking real well, so I'm going to stamp off. Yeah, see, I, I, I just knew from what I was doing there that that one was not stamping good, or it wasn't inking up well. And I don't want to mess up this card now that I've worked those flowers in it. So I'm going to put down a little bit of the squeaky clean and clean that stamp. And like I've told you before, I have found out that squeaky clean will condition your stamps to where they will stamp really good. And I'm going to use this little microfiber cloth that I have just to kind of get off the excess. And then we're going to try this again. Now don't fret over, if you want to reproduce this flower, I will definitely have all the measurements, the items I used, and um, an affiliate link where you can actually go and purchase some of these items. So um, please don't feel like that you can't um, make this card. I'm going to try stamping this off one more time. I just don't want to take a chance of it not taking on my, on my card. So bear with me. That's still not good. Every now and then you just get a stamp that does not want to stamp well. I'm going to go in and press that down between it and see if that will help. Sometimes if you have stamps that won't stamp well, see that I'm looking for. I'll be right back when I get this set up. Okay, we're well back, and I got my Misty set up with my piece of cardstock in there, and I'm hoping this is going to work. So I'm just going to close this up and pick up my stamp. I'm going to make sure that that cardstock did not move. Okay. I've got it um, pressed down pretty good. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to ink up the stamp again. And we're going to hope for the best. I think the cushion, the cushioning in the Misty also helps everything to stamp much better. Um, I think that's one of the things that makes the Misty uh, stand apart from, and it, it messed up. Hmm. It's okay. We're going we're gonna to make this work. I'm going to just show you how you can fix some boo-boos. Alright, I'm going to come in with my white pen once the sink dries, 
and I am going to see if I can clean that up a little bit. So other than it getting ink right there, I think the rest of it is pretty good. Um, not perfect, but let's see if we can work on it just a little bit. This is a Nuvo um, pen. It's almost like a marker, but it has a very fine tip brush. So I am going to go in and just fill this in. Now this can be very tedious, but this will also help you save a card. I get very quiet when I'm doing something this tedious, so just bear with me. I might fast forward through this. And then again, I don't think I will because I want y'all to see um, the struggles that we all have. Um, you know, I get so many comments on my cards that you're such a good card maker and um, I, it's way too hard for me and I can't do that. And You know, please, please don't sell yourself short. Um, I started out just like you, and I didn't get where I am in my craft without a lot of error. So I encourage you to always try and try and try again. Uh, you just cannot sell yourself short. Um, and yeah, you may make a blunder. Uh, do what I do. Try it out on some um, paper that you don't care about. You know, um, everybody's got ugly paper. <laughs> we buy these big packs, and sometimes the papers are just, you know, we there's a lot of them we love, but there's some that we just don't like. So find those papers that you don't like and colors that you probably wouldn't use and uh, use those and try it. Try it on plain cardstock with that ugly paper, plain white cardstock and ugly paper. You will be surprised. And as you build your confidence, you will find that you are a lot better in card making than what you give yourself credit for. So don't, just please don't sell yourself short. Be positive and, um, and try new things. You know, that's, uh, I really want to challenge everyone to try something that's outside your comfort zone. So... get these little pieces back in here like so and I can put my misty up and now I'm gonna see if I can clean that up a little bit I'm gonna start out using my little mono sand race eraser this sometimes will help this is just a sand eraser and what it does this can comes from Tombow and it's it will help erase ink so we've got this ink right in here that we do not want. So I'm going to just go in there and see if I can sand a little bit of that out. don't get out I'm going to try covering it with a white gel pen these are two tricks that you can do um, if you get small specks of ink on something you know like this now this did not happen to this card that I made this card came together beautifully and I didn't have any um, problems at all with the the making of this card so um, you know, there's sometimes we just run into these little things, and for me today, it was this stamp set that proved to be my nemesis. 
So when we run into these problems like this, we just try to fix them. And as my friend Edith Ray would say, if you can't fix them, cover them up with bling. So if this all fails, I may just run some um, little rhinestones up underneath the May God. Um, so we'll see. There's always more than one way to fix your arrows. I'm getting a little more aggressive with this paper. That's a lot better than it was, but it's still not perfect. So let's pull out the gel pen. Um, let me find a good one. I'm going to shake the ink in this to make sure that it's coming down. And then I am going to grab a little sticky note that's a different color so I can see if it's coming. Look, I've got ink down here, probably off of my hand. Okay, let's see if this is going to... This isn't the smoothest one. Let's find a different one that maybe is a little bit smoother. Let's try this jelly roll. Okay, let's go in here and see if we can clean that up a little bit with the jelly roll. like it's just um, smearing it more. So it is at this point where you have to decide do you want to try to salvage this card or do you want to just let it go and start over. Not the card but this the inside mat. For me I want to salvage it so I think at this point I am going to look for some pearls. Let's see if we can find something that we can put over top of that that will camouflage it and yet dress the card. And you know, if all else fails, we will have to make this piece over. I will try to get my flowers off of it though. Do this all along here and it's just gonna hopefully look like I wanted to put pearls under May God I think that's fine. I would not mind sending this at all. Um, I think that that was a good save. I think we can still salvage this card by doing that. You may disagree, and that's fine. If you decide, if you make a boo-boo like this, and this isn't something that you would want to send someone, then I say by all means, take this piece, pull your flowers off if you can get them off, and if you can't, cut out around them. And you can still use those flowers on a card. But I'm good with that. I think it's going to look really cute inside. Just like so. 
And there you go. I think I do want a piece of bling right there. I think that's going to set that off and make it look really, really pretty. And I might even do a couple of these small ones right in here. Now this is the way my cards are almost like always a work in progress until I actually put them in the mail. <laughs> I don't know if y'all are like that or not, but hey, that's how I roll. All right, so that's our card. Let's go ahead and glue this down. And I am going to use our glitter glue on this side. Paying a very special attention to get it really good around the edges. These little limbs are trying to move on me, so I'm going to put just a tiny bit of glue and just kind of adhere them down just a little bit. I want them to have a little raised look, but I don't want them to come undone. And there we go. Now this card is done. I hope y'all like this um, style of card. I hope that this is something that you perhaps would try. Now, these both both of these cards are done with the same principle, but they look a little different. The color change, the placement of the flowers, the the ribbon versus the um, piece of cardstock that's embossed. So, um, again, I challenge you to make it yours. Do something uh, with something like this that makes you happy. And uh, these cards make me happy. And this card, I actually have someone in mind for it. And I don't think they will mind one bit me covering up a boo-boo. So um, I hope y'all have a very blessed day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. And uh, share this with your friends and family. I hope everybody has a very, very blessed day. I hope that you are loved by your family and your friends, and I hope you show them love. And uh, just be a blessing in someone's life today. I love y'all all, and I will see you next time we craft. Until then, bye-bye.